How did things go so wrong? How did we end up driving with no heat at night outside Detroit, late for an appointment, and about to run out of the fuel we need? It's our first adventure with a fully electric car, and it began by renting Arthur Potts' entry-level, battery-only vehicle. Welcome. How are you? Very well indeed. Good to see you. The, this is it. This is it, the okay. Kia Soul. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit more expensive, but now I think the cost benefit, you're nuts to buy an internal combustion engine if you're driving around a city. I save maybe 3000 3500 a year in gasoline. Turns out Potts pushed EVs in the last Ontario government. I was the junior minister for environment uh, and climate change. Drivers are still shy of battery-only offerings, no gas engine at all. So what's holding us back? That's four things. Cost to buy, range, how far they can go between charging, whether there are enough charging stations, and the time it takes to recharge. Along with producer Jill and videographer Ed, I'm testing those out on this journey. So 11 and a half million Canadians do what we're doing right now, and that is commute by car to work. On average, they drive 23 kilometers one way, which means 46 there and back. Starting with 138 kilometers of range, we drive 50 kilometers on the highway one way, then add some stops on city streets for a return journey of 60K. Remaining range, about 28 kilometers. Total cost to recharge at home, under two bucks. How many times do we stop at a gas station? Not once. Not once. But we knew this part was gonna be easy. All the EV experts we consulted said these cars are a no-brainer for city driving. But what if you need to take a road trip? Yeah, so tomorrow we head to Detroit. Yikes. Overnight, we're using a level one charger, the smallest and slowest there is. Okay, so we parked the car at 6 o'clock last night, started charging it at 7.30 now, 11 and a half hours later. How are we doing? The car is at 86%, and it could actually take five more hours of charging to get up to 100%. That's okay. This is enough for what we need to do today. And what are we doing? Well, it's actually a little bit risky. We are going 400 kilometers all the way to Detroit. It's a big road trip in an electric vehicle, one we've never done. Teslas, like the one next to us here, can make the trip in just one stop. But for us, in this much cheaper $35,000 car, we're looking at a max range of 165 kilometers. Cold weather can shrink that down by a quarter, so trip planning is key. If we go dead, it's not like you can just walk to a gas station, because not everywhere can give you a charge. Exactly. Basically, our experiment is yeah, over. Is over. Yeah. Jill is using an app to track where we can recharge along the way, and we can use that app to pay for the top-ups as well. Okay, never done this before, so let's see. Plug the charging connector into your vehicle. I think it's this one. Or is it? No? Yeah. That looks right. Yeah. So here we go. The app actually says how long it's been, how long it's costing me. It's $20 an hour to do this, but this is a fast charger, so it's gonna go pretty quickly. 20% charged right now. The stop gives us time to make a call. A chat with an EV expert, Simon Willette of Charge Hub. Hi, Simon. Hey, how's it going? Well, it's okay, we're, we're on our first stop. So we got about 100 kilometers, and uh, you can see it. Here we are with our car and our charging station, and it's at 65% right now after only about 10 minutes. What do we need to know about sort of maximizing our mileage, our range? Cabin heat um, takes up a lot more energy. So dress warm, that'll get you a lot of extra miles. We're at 80% right now. So I think I'm gonna wrap this call up with you because we're gonna disconnect and hit the road. Back on the road and the heat's turned way down to extend our range. Uh-oh. And after another 100 kilometers? Please visit a nearby charging station. Ah, uh, time for another stop. Pretty soon we'll be redlining it. Oh, there you go. Okay, uh, just pulled on off the highway here. 
not quite running on fumes, but we got 16 kilometers of range left. So we really pushed the limit on this In one. 300 meters, turn right on Wellington Road. There we go. So I think for this stop, we're gonna wanna go above 80%. The next stop is 116 kilometers away and there's nothing between here and there. Okay, get the app out. $20 an hour to use this. We'll probably use it for about half an hour. After lunch and back on the road for half an hour, and that's when things start to go wrong. We should have taken a different <laughs> Oh, is that why you're saying that? Okay. Yeah. Are we way off? Uh, How far off of our plan are we? relative to where our next charging station is. This says there's two yeah. stations available. Like what are we close to here? We could go backwards. I don't think we should go backwards. Uh, but we have to find something in front of us. So, a new route it is. Okay. Time for recharge, and not a moment too soon. We are only about 10 kilometers of range left. All right, it's charging, 9% already. Might as well get something warm inside. Okay, let me think. None of this was part of the plan. We're now late, so supposed to be in Detroit in less than an hour with no chance of making it. And now, another issue. The charger we're plugged into is not charging at the rate we've become accustomed to. It's um, going slower. Time to phone a friend. Simon's our EV lifeline. We ended up taking a different route than we planned, and so we didn't go to the charger that we planned. We found another charger. We're at that charger, but it's taking much longer than we thought it would, even though it's still a level three. Why is that? Uh, usually you'll, you'll see 50 kilowatts. So that's probably what you've been charging at most of the day today, but now you've probably hit one that, that is throttled down to a lower, a lower power. It's about 100 kilometers from here to there, and our car is not charged up sufficiently for that right now. Oh, we got no, that? 107. 107? Okay, so I'm going to go out and see if we got that much. Fifty-two percent. That's not going to be enough. So our range right now is 78 kilometers. It's not enough to get us to Detroit. So I think we're probably going to have to wait it out. The alternative is driving to a faster charger than this one, but it's a bit of a gamble. We have just enough range remaining to make it, but not enough time. We need to speed up and doing so reduces the range faster. To compensate, we're turning all the heat off and it gets very cold very fast. But we do make it to the auto show just before it closes. Okay, we made it. To meet Paul Rizuski of the Toronto Electric David, Vehicle Association. Good to meet you. Thanks so much well. for waiting for us. Okay, my hands are frozen, my feet are frozen. We had to turn everything off in order to get here. Here's so, my thing. People are gonna look at what we've done and they're gonna say, uh-oh. I don't know about an EV. The, the good news is that you drove a previous generation electric car. So over there is the same car you were driving. It's being introduced with more than double the size of the battery. In other words, we could have made it without recharging or maybe recharging once. A very different kind of story and gives you a sense of where EVs are headed. It makes you realize how, in just two years, a single car model has really extended its range. There are some lessons, though. EVs certainly can be affordable and seem great for city commutes, but not all models are suitable for longer road trips. Still, progress is happening and happening quickly. Longer ranges, shorter recharges, and more charging stations. David Common, CBC News, Detroit. Here in Canada, an expert we spoke with said the number of charging stations has been doubling year over year, but access really depends where you start driving and where you're trying to get to. 
So these are all the public fast charging stations in Canada, the ones that take about a half hour to top up most electric vehicles. There are a bunch in southern BC and in parts of Ontario, Quebec and the Maritimes, but there are still areas, especially across the prairies, where they are few and far between.